Welcome to the Mindfulness of Singing, and I'm Denise, your sassy, spunky scientist. And I'm Tony, your bubbly, big-hearted flower child. Our podcast features practical tips and tools for a journey of transformation using the healing power of your voice. Each podcast, we will delve into the mind, body, and spirit connection by interviewing inspirational guests, sharing personal stories, and discussing the most recent scientific research. Tune in and join our community of mindful singers. Hello, Denise. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm excited about our guest. Oh, yeah? Shall I tell you all about them? I think you should. Okay, well, for those of you that maybe missed last week's podcast, I told the story of how I was driving down the road in Bellingham, Washington, and had one of those screeching, halting moments driving down the car because I saw a building that said, Sound Awakenings, Awakening to the Healing Vibration of Your Body. Let me get the quote right. It's uh, Awakening to Who We Truly Are Using Frequency. And I knew that was something I needed to learn more about. So I pulled over and immediately went in the shop and I got to meet Linda, who's going to be on our podcast today. And I've chatted with Elena and Bob. And so let me just read their very interesting backgrounds and bios, and then we'll meet them in a few minutes. So Linda, who I actually had a session with using the interdimensional sound chamber, her name is Linda Hopper. She's Wise Awakenings Facilitator of the Interdimensional Sound Chamber and is a sound and vibrational practitioner. She is an active explorer of the spiritual realm who enjoys connecting with others on a similar path. She has practiced med meditation for over 25 years, incorporating Vipassana insight meditation with energy levels of grounding, centering, running energy to clear chakra centers, and co-taught a year clairvoyant training program for six years. Linda applies her knowledge of alchemy, crystal singing bowls, drums, and tuning forks while in session. She's excellent, and you'll get to enjoy her today. And then Elena, who also uh, helps with the sound chamber, facilitator Wise Awakening Sound Chamber. She is a shamanic healing practitioner. She's lived and apprenticed with indigenous Peruvian shamans for many years. She has 23 years of experience in healing and energy work and is a licensed hypnotherapist. With intuition as her guidance, she holds a safe space for you to move through what no longer serves you. Elena incorporates the breath, journey, guiding imagery, movement, shamanic ritual, energy balancing, and soul retrieval and recovery, all of which comes from a place of gratitude. And then I don't have a bio on Bob, but Bob and Diana La, LaRue Hand, are the ones who discovered the interdimensional sound chamber. And that's kind of a cool mystical experience that they had. And you can read that whole story on the Sound Awakenings website. That's uh, our three guests that we're having today. Wow, I'm overwhelmed. I can't wait to listen. Yeah. I'm not gonna have a whole lot to say because I don't know a whole lot about any of that except for the hypnotism part that I you know, know and love. but. Oh, okay. Very cool. You have the craziest life, I tell you. <laughs> I do. I mean, I, 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 you're the only person I know that can walk into a town, totally like don't know anybody, right? And just happen upon something that is not only right up your alley, but like flips your switch. Isn't it amazing, Denise? Remember, remember when I was in Arezzo, Italy, my favorite movie was filmed there. I met a man who's a friend today, whose daughter is famous on Oprah, Oprah for minimalism and took me all around Arezzo to see where my movie was My movie was filmed. I mean, it, it is kind of crazy how divine, I, in fact, I have a mantra that Denise, that I say, I'm open to divine appointments and every appointment is divine. This morning I was having lunch with a friend and I reached over, there was a stack of newspapers hanging. And what's the one that I picked up, just reached over and it said the divine journey. And so I knew it was something spiritual. And then it was in Italy and it was a place I had visited. So immediately I was telling him all these exciting things that happened where I want to go and this walk and that is my life and I'm grateful for it. And so, and I'm grateful for you and the chance to meet these cool people and, and the experience that I had. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. It is really amazing. 
for sure. I, I, um, I'm always like, so, so, when you say I'm going on a journey somewhere, I'm like, well, I can't wait to hear what this is going to bring about. <laughs> Who knows what? Yeah. So really great at the whole, the whole manifestation thing. It's, it's amazing. Well, thank you. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure to watch it all happen, especially, you know, I can't think of a person who deserves it more. Oh, bless you. I did not pay Denise to say that just now. <laughs> I just, just um, wanted to confession. I have a, I have I a friend. The girl's been through her whole life and <laughs> she deserves it. Thank you. Thank you. I have a friend who says, Tony, you need to be really careful what you think about because you bring it about. You have the gift of, I don't know about a gift, but I'm grateful for all the, the good things. And there's certainly been some up downs along that way too. And happy to be over those and enjoying life to the fullest. So absolutely absolutely well you know it's it's kind of funny because you know i'm so interested in the whole psychology and psychotherapy space and all of that and i feel like every day i meet somebody in that yesterday i had a voice lesson with a psychiatrist oh neat neat just out of the blue you know and i um i said what do you do during the day and she was like i'm a psychiatrist i'm like really wow so, you know, we were able to make lots of connections when I start talking about how it, uh, she was asking, you know, how frustrated am I going to be and how hard is it going to be to break old habits? And I start talking about neural pathways and how you build new neural pathways for new habits and that singing has so many neural pathways built in the tongue neural pathway, the, the jaw neural pathway, the breath that's a neural pathway and all the things that are autonomic and and then all the things that aren't in our awareness, but can become in our awareness when someone can help us get it there, you know, like a teacher or a voice teacher or a psychotherapist or somebody who can help bring something to awareness that, you know, it's there in the subconscious, but we are not aware of its life. And I feel like voice, singing, anything you do with your body as an instrument, whether it's athletics, playing an instrument, and certainly singing for sure has all of these deeply embedded neurological connections that happen. And uh, of course we were really bonding over that because she knows that very well, learned those things in med school and, and it, you know, just brings to, um, it makes me feel better as a voice teacher because I've been saying for years, you know, this is, this is a subconscious thing, you, you, you know, but I, I didn't have science to back it up. I just knew that in my own life and in my own singing, my jaw was a subconscious thing. I had no idea until a teacher brought it to my, my, you know, awareness. And then once I was able to go, oh my gosh, I just felt that my jaw totally just went out. So yeah, all those cool connections that happen are really something else. Uh, why don't both of you uh, describe it a little bit. I, I can describe it myself having been inside of Sleeping Beauty inside of it. I'll let you guys with more expertise share a little bit more about what it's about. Well, I'd like to start by just reading uh, how Diana describes it. Okay. Um, Diana sent me an email several years ago when we had a conversation about um, how would she explain the sound chamber to someone else. And so I'm just going to read real quickly from the email. Um, she, she talks about uh, starting the uh, storefront in spring equinox of 2005 and everything that Wise Awakening, the store has become, is because of the interdimensional sound chamber. And um, she's had thousands of people come through the sound chamber from all walks of life and from all over the world. And the chamber, she describes it as a remarkable delivery system to help people learn and feel how to raise and hold a higher vibration within their energy field. And uh, people come to us with all manner of intention because intention is very important in creating what you would like to experience. So people come with all manner of intention and when they raise their vibration, they come into alignment with the higher purpose of their soul. And it's easier to manifest what they would like to experience in their life. So the sound chamber 
is a star tetrahedron or a Merkaba, Merkaba that holds the energy for people to raise their frequencies with the complementary sound and music that's played through the chamber. And that's what struck Diana so strongly when she had her first uh, session with Dr. Tom Hunt was it just kind of blew her open. It's like, this is my purpose. I understand this now. She didn't understand how it works. She just knew it worked. And, um, and that's how she would explain yeah. it to others is it's very experiential. It's not something that you can sit down and cognitively make a lot of sense out of unless you've studied sacred geometry and math and physics and all of those sorts of things. But when you, when you are, as you had your session, when you're in the session, it will take you, it will help support you to go to whatever information you are ready to receive and whatever frequency and vibration you're ready to hold. So that's how Diana would explain it. And that's kind of how I tend to explain it when people ask, you know, well, what's this all about? It's a vehicle that helps us hold a higher frequency of vibration. Beautiful. Elena, would you like to add to that too? I'm um, sure I'll, I'll add it in, in, a, in a different way of, of what I've seen people come in and experience and intention as Linda is saying is, is quite important. And, actually had someone come from California yesterday, drove to for a session over to go into the interdimensional chamber. And he, when he came out, it was, it's basically like, wow, you know, more than I thought I could hear the chatter. I wanted to connect with my higher self. And I was able to fly through, he said, you know, fly through and connect with his higher self and ancestors and other answers he had questions for. So um, it is in meeting your higher self or in meeting your intention. And I feel it also unfolds, not only in those moments or that time you're in there and when you leave the chamber, that that unfolds within time, and I call it integration time after you leave that it's working, it's constantly working with your field if you choose to stay in that place. Beautiful. I want to read something briefly, and then I know Denise probably wants to chime in, and it might jog you all to share something else about it. I also found this in the story about Bob and Dinah's experience. It's based on sacred geometry, as you've all mentioned, and pi principles. The inner dimensional sound chamber includes 144 triangles, a uh, fun fact about Wise Awakening is its address is 314. The old triangle address window is still up in the foyer. If you stand in the building entry and look out towards the street from behind the glass, the numbers spell pi 314 backwards. I thought that was interesting. And you lay down on this soft bed. And how many speakers in it? Like nine that surround your body? Is that correct? Um, there's eight above in the chamber and there's eight along oh. your spine, eight under the bed. So you get the spinal massage as well as getting the speakers coming from above. So 16, yes. Okay, so I, I underestimated there. So <laughs> that, that feeling of the sound all around you, if you ever you know, felt like the sound, like someone is singing right here around your, your body. Um, so Denise, do you have any questions before I keep bombarding them <laughs> as, a, as a newbie to the, all of this? Yeah, so um, I guess my question would be, you were talking about intention and that all, all of that. And I, I totally believe that whatever intention you have, if you were in there to find out what your purpose is, you know, if that's your intention, that's probably gonna strongly manifest. I, I believe all of that. But I'm just wondering if you can relay any experience that maybe someone stumbled in and they're like, this is a lot of bunk. I don't believe this, you know, or whatever. And if, and can you say like what an experience would be for somebody who's just not a believer, but is curious and comes into the space? Have you had any interesting experiences with somebody like that? The skeptics. Yeah. Okay, Elena, I'll, do you want to start? Sure. I'll start. Uh, that's unusual. Yeah. And, and I'll say that the only person that comes to mind had, you know, I'm going to use words that, that felt that she was cloaked mm -hmm. and it was gifted to her and maybe really didn't and or wasn't ready to go in and as a gift went in and came out um, maybe 
like, well, I'm not really quite sure. And we talked about this cloaking because of, of what I saw. And she was able to, to confirm and saying, I am feeling cloaked. I have this, that going on in my life. And my guess it's, it also still did what it, what it needed to do and in supporting her through her process. But for her, she felt maybe chatter. So she was hearing her own chatter in, in her mind. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that really, I find that really interesting. I wouldn't imagine too many people would stumble into there unless they're already open and, and, Seekers. and, and are seeking something like that and would want to have that experience. I, I, I would see you and be curious. I don't know if I would know enough about it though, to like have an intention before I get in there, but I think I would be, if I hadn't known what I know now, you know, and I was wandering down your streets, I'd be like, that place looks cool. I should go in there and I'd be open to whatever happened, you know? And that happens often. Many people come in and just say, I was walking by and I need to be in there and I have no clue what it is, but I know I need to be in there. And I usually, before, if it's not done over the phone, I talk about their intention so that they can understand what an intention is and come in. And I even invite them to bring a crystal or a talisman of sorts to, to bring in there with them that I feel that that receives the energy as well. So, yeah. I'll pass it to Linda. Sure. Uh, my experience with those folks, um, sometimes it's because a friend of theirs or a family member felt they should receive a session, they're ready for a session and the person's a little skeptical at that time. And so I present it to them um, if, if you're not sure that you have a specific intention at this time, just relax, let the music take you wherever it's going to take you. Um, it's working anyway, <laughs> whether, whether you specifically name an intention or whatever, when you're opening your heart and you're opening your awareness to receiving whatever comes your way, whether it's deep relaxation and you take a nap while you're in there, um, it, it's all for the good. It's all for helping you be surrounded by higher frequency music. Um, and, it, you know, your intention is going to be shown to you or, or aware, you'll be aware of it down the road a ways, maybe. And it's like, oh, that's what I experienced in the chamber. Now I can connect that. Does someone compose the music for you? We have a large selection of CDs. And some of them are um, hemisync, uh, brainwave uh, type of CDs, okay? Many of them are, uh, some are Gregorian chants. Some are, um, we've had several musicians, Jonathan Goldman, we have a lot of his work. Uh, David Eisen does a lot with uh, frequencies and harmonies. And um, so what we've done, we can, we have uh, a large, um, amp system and uh, CD uh, system where we can put more than one in and move the music around depending on how Elena and I might read where the person's at. Um, some Safaj music, which is just all frequency and the, and the wonderful hertz that you can get. I like to start with something that's a very grounding kind of piece of music, maybe some didgeridoo or uh, even drumming or something that kind of gets the person settled and anchored in. And then as the session goes on, move up to something that might be of a higher Hertz that takes them, it opens their kind of the different chakra energy centers a little bit more and helps to clear uh, some of that energy for them and then bring them back down with uh, some like almost like a little lullaby or something at the end. So um, we have created different um, uh, discs, a single discs with a variety of different um, types and hertz of, of music, depending on where the person might be. Some people are coming in having experienced deep grief, loss of a loved one or, or um, illness of some sort, and they really just need to be comforted and to know that they're okay exactly where they are. This is the path that they're on. And so you'd want to play something that's very gently taking them through different um, hurts 
frequencies. And other people come in and go, I'm ready to solve all the world's problems. So let's get rolling. And so you want something that's a bit more stimulating for them. So you just sort of read where the person's at each time. Because every time person, I have a lady that's been working with me every week for four years and each session is completely different. Wow. So, that's yeah. Go ahead, Denise. Okay. My last question, maybe I'm not promising anything. <laughs> my last question is, uh, have you ever had anybody go in and go, don't play sound. I just want to sing. I have. Yes. And I have people who's, who, who, may recognize the song. I don't know if you're familiar with a woman named Ashana, but she works a lot with um, uh, alchemy, crystal alchemy singing bowls. And she sings a lot of familiar tunes. She'll sing the Lord's Prayer. She'll sing Ave Maria. She'll sing Kyrie Eleison, some of those more familiar tunes. And people will sing along with her. Profoundly powerful when you add your voice to the vibration that you're getting in the chamber. And that's that totally encouraged. If somebody wants to hum along or they know the song and sing along, wonderful. It goes even deeper. I would imagine so, yes. And I would agree. I've had some people come in and where there were not any lyrics and hands go up and they're singing and it's quite, quite beautiful to, to witness. Beautiful. I have an opposite question to Denise. We, we are opposites. My buddy are opposites. And so since Denise asked what happens when the skeptic kind of comes in, how do they handle that? And it doesn't surprise me that you said it's more seekers who come because if you're skeptical, you might not come in the shop anyway, unless someone has, as you said, has kind of forced you. So that doesn't surprise me. But can you tell on the opposite end, what's the most dramatic experience that you've experienced? Or have you since you're both very sensitive to energy, obviously from your background and having sat with people numerous times, do you ever feel yourself taking on all the pain or the energy or have any kind of um, mystical or divine experience or feedback for the person who's in the chamber? So I kind of ask you two questions. What's the most dramatic thing you've had happen to someone? And then what's the most dramatic thing that's happened to you as a result of participating in their journey? Elena, you want to take it? First sure. Shot? Sure. Um, I would say most dramatic. I don't know if it's dramatic other than watching transformation and witnessing transformation of deep tears come through of either anywhere from grief to excitement to, wow, I'm, I'm ready to look at myself to, you know, I mean, it, it, it's it's a mix, and and I honor tears of knowing what what that does for all of us, for and for the person's experience. Um, and then, as far as myself sitting in there, you know, I sit on the side. We sit on the side uh, near the music, and I w either watch. I could see colors when I close my eyes to see what what messages am I receiving if the person going in is interested in knowing I don't just offer it and it's usually spot on what they're receiving the message that they're I'm either hearing from an ancestor or a pyramid that is around them and they're like oh my god I saw a pyramid or I'm thinking of different times of, of something coming out of someone's head and going in and they were experiencing similar things. So um, that's, if, if I were to feel anything, I just feel such gratitude and I can receive tears of gratitude, feeling the love that is just in this room that Diana has created that I give honor and gratitude to her and the ancestors when we close session because we are an ancestor's land always. And Diana's created this for us to do this work that is just profound, so. That, that's beautiful. When you said you see colors, are you talking specifically about aura around the person, like the colors of their energy? What, what did you mean by seeing colors? Is that it what you be, mean? It can be colors, aura field around them or around the chamber. Oh, so cool. It, it may be a little, you know, different with everyone because everyone's session is different. Interesting. The energy space itself contains when a different energy is inside of it. That's, that's, that's yeah. cool. And it is a very sacred space when you walk in 
you really do yeah. feel like you're in. And I, even though the chamber is the uh, metal steel, it's open, it still feels kind of enclosed. It's, it's kind of both, if that makes sense. Anyway, yeah. Linda, go ahead and, and chime in. So I'll, I'll but Linda. Well, one of the things that's really important that Len and I both agree upon and Diana stressed as well when she was training, um, training me was that we hold a, a bit of a meditation prior to the person actually getting into the chamber and starting the music. And the purpose of the meditation is to uh, help that person, uh, energy meditation to ground uh, their body. So the physical body feels safe and connected and knows that you're not if, if you choose to expand your awareness that you're actually gonna come back to the physical body again, because that's very, very important. And to just sort of clear their space and to clear the temple space and the chamber space as well, because it's a partnership. While the person is in the chamber receiving the session and, 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 and totally cocooned in the chamber and the music and the, and the frequency, uh, we are holding sacred space for them to do their, their important work. And so we start with that guided meditation and explain that to people so that they know, you know, we're not leaving the room to go take a coffee break, that we are there and, and, uh, and partnering with them to make sure that their session is a comfortable, safe, secure session. Um, so in one sense, I, I, I'm not a visual person generally, so I tend to be intuiting uh, emotion or um, feedback from from maybe the chamber, from their uh, the person's higher self, my higher self, that sort of thing. I would get fairly regularly because we've got a very clear space that's uh, available to receive those messages in. Um, I've had a person who got in and was so overwhelmed with the music and uh, just the experience that they couldn't continue. They asked me to stop. And so we got out and I played several different alchemy bowls for them that were grounding and bringing them kind of back into the body and back into a place where they felt safe and comfortable. And that's happened once or twice in the five years I've been doing the sessions. And it's, you know, the chamber and the person have uh, kind of a relationship going on. And if it isn't working, then we stop and we try something different that will bring them to a place of comfort and ease. Um, but I would like to recall a, a special session that Diana told us about or told me about, and I think maybe Elena knows about it as well. When she first opened Wise Awakening back in 2005, she had a family come in, a mom and dad with two young children, and they wanted to be in the chamber together at the same time. They, and that's great. A parent there with the child is really important. So they were sitting in the chamber rather than a single person laying down in the chamber and it was quiet and they each had headphones and they were experiencing and all of a sudden the one little boy started chattering and talking and gesturing and Diana was thinking, you know, maybe she should quiet him down for the rest of the folks to continue the session and she didn't, she just let it play itself out. And the parents were so overwhelmed when the session was completed because the young child was autistic and doesn't speak and doesn't interact and engage very comfortably. And in this session, he was animated, he was chatting, he was talking, he was pointing to things, whatever he might have been seeing. And the parents were absolutely overwhelmed that through the experience of the chamber, he connected with them in a whole new way that they hadn't experienced before. So the healing takes place on multiple levels and it's just very, I'm in awe of some of the things that, that people get to experience and that we get to share with them because we're facilitating the session. That's beautiful. What a beautiful story. That gave me goosebumps. That's yeah. That must, must have been awesome, awesome for her to witness and to mm -hmm. be a part yeah. of. That's, that's really lovely. Um, so I want to invite all our listeners who want to hop on the plane or get in the car and come to, <laughs> Yeah, well, that leads me to my next question. What's your weather like the second week of March? <laughs> That's when Denise is coming for her appointment. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, um, sometimes we get uh, some clear days in March. <laughs> this okay. is Western Washington. I'll wait till May. We're in the middle of a, of a 
I don't know, atmospheric river pineapple express today. So we've had massive rainstorms, but by March, it tends to be a little bit calmer. Um, and um, yeah, it would be a very good time to come in. Bellingham. Whatever time, whatever time you're available is a very good time to come in. Oh, well, maybe May. I just, you know, I'm, I don't like cold weather, so I don't want to come when if it's going to be snowing and cold. It's so beautiful, so much to see and explore and bike and hike and get outdoors. I, I never intended to be there as long as I was of trying to get to Canada. That sounds, uh, like May. that sounds like something you'd want to be there in May so you could do all those things. Uh, well, you can do those in the cold too. But anyway, regardless, check out Wise Awakenings. And if everybody can't get to Wise Awakenings, do you all know of a place where someone can enjoy? I think there's only three now that are functional. Maybe, Linda, you shared that with me. I'm not sure. Um, most of them are private. Uh, there's some in one in Europe. Can can you all expound on where they are and if anybody can take advantage of a chamber somewhere else besides Wise Awakenings? I can mention the ones that I'm familiar with and Elena and Bob may know of some others. When Diana and I were talking about this a couple years ago, there's ours, which is the last one that Dr. Hunt made. Um, about two years before COVID hit a couple of years ago, a fellow walked in the store and was shopping and he saw the sound chamber and he said, oh, my friend has one of those. And we went, really? And he goes, yeah. And he showed us a photo. His friend had it in his home uh, somewhere in Tucson, Arizona. So there's one in Tucson, Arizona, but I tried to find it. I was looking to see if I could identify where some of the rest were. And I really wasn't able to, uh, other than... Um, I believe there's a woman in Northern California and not in Shasta, but in that vicinity of Northern California. Okay. Which makes sense energetically. Uh -huh. And there's one in Minneapolis that Diana knew about. So there's four that I'm aware of ours and three others that um, are in the U S and then I know that there was one somewhere in Europe, but I, I don't beyond that. I'm not sure where. Elena, do you have any recollection of any of that? The only one I have a recollection of is the one in California. And that was, I was doing some research online and it looked like it was in someone's home just by the picture, but haven't found anything else. I was at a, a sound healing concert two weeks ago and uh, the man used um, binaural beats while he was playing his singing balls and we were chatting afterwards and he mentioned that he had something at home where people were lying on a bed to feel the frequency. I said, that sounds like the interdimensional sound chamber. And he was familiar with it. I, I thought that was pretty cool that, you know. Yeah, neat. That, yeah, it was really neat. I'm guessing that maybe Bob has accidentally left us or not able to join us. Bob, are you, I'm assuming since we don't see an image that maybe he has well, we will, we will let that go. Is there anything else, uh, Denise, that you'd like to ask or ladies that you'd love to share that we just didn't know to even ask that might be uh, helpful for those in the mindfulness of singing to uh, know about the chamber or your work, your lovely ladies and all the things you do? I mean, well, I, I don't have any, I don't have any more. I think I have all my questions have been answered, so I don't have any more questions. Oh, well, it, you know, it's been lovely. And, I, you know, on the side, I do some shamanic work as a shamanic practitioner. And um, since COVID, with a lot of Zoom, at times I use the chamber room for in-person sessions. But um, it's been it's been wonderful. So so do people have online sound sessions with you in your shamanic work or can can you give a shout out how people could connect with both of you if they can't get on a plane and fly or drive they could still maybe connect with you all so how can they do that for for a shamanic session they can contact me through elena p salazar.com through my website and for the interdimensional sound chamber through wise awakenings lovely and your shamanic experience that how many years have you been training and did you have one particular shaman that you worked under or expand on that just a little bit and we'll wrap up but i'm curious on various my background started with massage over 26 years ago and i ended up in south america and apprenticing in the northern part of peru and um in the jungle and then as well as bali so various shamans of various ways Nice, nice, nice. Well, Linda, how can people connect with you? Actually, through Wise Awakening also. 
the main store number and, and they can ask for either Elena or myself. Um, and it's pretty, I would find it difficult to do a sound chamber session through a Zoom session. I and mean, you need to be in the presence of the, that frequency in a more intimate kind of way, I think, by being in the chamber. So I, for one, probably would not be doing any, any online sessions through the chamber. Um, but yeah, I have a background in energy uh, and, and um, have for years been doing meditation groups and teaching classes on we are energy beings and what does that mean and how do we work with our energy body and our energy system and that sort of thing. So it's, it's fun to blend it in together with what the sound chamber offers. Nice. Well, I just want to give a plug. If you didn't happen to catch our other recent podcast, we interviewed uh, Tom Durant about oh, great. Heels last week. And I met Jennifer, his lovely wife, when my car came to a screeching halt and I read the window uh, <laughs> and I came in and talked to her and I said, I need this experience. I'm only in town today. I'm leaving tomorrow. How can you make this happen? And she contacted both of you and I was able to connect with Linda. So thank you, ladies. I was one of those seekers who stumbled down the street and I'm grateful for the experience. And I hope to be back maybe with Denise and uh, we we are grateful for your time and the way you are blessing people through your work there. So thank you for joining us today and our listeners uh, plug in and take advantage of, of the beautiful things in Bellingham, Washington. Thank you very much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. forward to seeing you again. Thank you. That would be lovely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. We are very grateful that you joined us today. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, write a review, share it with a friend.